Welcome to the microengineering course. Now we'll continue here the two cavity Clisson. We have some discussion regarding a two cavity Clisson and some mathematical equations there. We'll continue. So now this beta i is nothing but a beam coupling coefficient. And this beam coupling coefficient, if you consider that it is depending upon that, what will be the spacing between the cavity, in the puncture cavity there? Or we can say that it is depending upon that a transit time angle. Or we can say that a transit time. So that transit time is what for a given bunching cavity what will be the, the time taken by the electron to be interacting with this cavity so now this one so if supposed to be i am going to consider this cavity here we supposed to say that this particular time okay so now this one is about a t0 time and a t1 time and we have written that here maximum input signal at this point at it is now we need to find out based on this particular beam coupling coefficient we can observe that that beam coupling coefficient that will be depending upon that a transit gap, gap angle okay that this theta g by 2 okay this one beam coupling coefficient it is depending upon the transit gap angle so now if you draw a graph of a beam coupling coefficient that is about a theta i and if with respect to this theta g here okay so in that case we say that a pi twice pi three pi be a four pi likewise so in that case generally the beam coupling coefficient is to be a one okay generally so from this okay so that beam transit gap angle it will be zero and then it will be likewise so you can say that okay so likewise so this one is about a beam coupling coefficient and this a transit gap angle so that a beam coupling beam coupling coefficient if you consider that here it will be depending upon that a transit gap gap angle there if the transit gap angle is decreases there and that transit gap angle is nothing but that a coupling between the electron beam and the puncher cavity okay this is nothing but a coupling between the electron beam and a puncher cavity so now here so electrons are interacted at this particular point that is a t0 point and electrons are leaving from this puncher gap at a time t1 so at a time t1 the exit velocity from the puncher gap is given by okay so whatever the we supposed to be consider that exit velocity okay earlier we say that velocity of a electron v0 so now our aim is about to find out that exit velocity of the electron so exit velocity of the electron we say that v is of at time t1 okay instead of v1 we say that at time t1 v of t1 so it is depending upon that choice of e by m v0 plus beam coupling coefficient beta i then v1 that is about the input signal here into sine of omega t0 plus theta g by 2 okay theta g by 2 that is about a gap transition okay so now this one and this one we supposed to be consider that twice of e here here we say that v0 is about it is beam voltage beta i and v1 beta i is the coupling coefficient v1 is the input signal here. even we can write this equation again in terms of a beam coupling coefficient or if we can see that that beta i here beam coupling coefficient so what will be the depth of the velocity modulation so that depth of the velocity modulation depending upon that what will be the dc beam voltage so we will rewrite the equation again v of t1 that is about the exit velocity here from the puncher gap voltage v of t1 is equal to under root of choice of 
be 0 by m into 1 plus beta i b1 b0 here b0 okay just see that what happened okay we supposed to be consider that b0 here okay. and then we say that the sign of omega t 0 plus theta t by 2 now this one this particular factor okay this particular factor we can say that a depth this particular factor that is called as a depth of a velocity modeling this factor is called as a depth this particular factor so this one consider this one this one okay beta i b1 by this one is nothing but a depth of the velocity modulation now we can find out this one again with respect to that what will be the initial velocity we can consider that choice of v0 by m so that is nothing but a v0 here so we can write here the equation of a v of t1 is equal to v0 1 plus beta i v1 by twice v0 into sign of omega t0 plus theta g by 2. This one is by consider the binomial expansion of this above equation, we will get the equation. This one is nothing but. And that equation is nothing but a equation for the velocity modeling because after that t1, so what will be the velocity modeling? Next is about a how that bunching will be takes place okay inside this particular cavity here so that is about a bunching process for the bunch is process that will be occur at the time of what we can say that bunching occur in a drift region okay bunching will occur in a drift region so what do you mean by drift region this one is about your cavity this one is about a cavity bunches formation takes place now then this bunches formation will be taken that this one is about t0 then t1 so after t1 so in this particular cavity then bunches will reach so that is about a this one is about a drift region here okay this one is about a drift region and in this particular drift region or distance from this buncher cavity to the catcher cavity so that is about a distance and in between this particular distance in between this particular gap that is about drift region so that bunches are moving towards the catcher gap. so now our aim is about to find out at what particular distance or at what particular length that bunches formation will take place okay so what will be the length here so for that purpose we should know that what will be the a bunching process or a bunching diagram there generally we say that here okay so this one is about a bunch of grid for example we supposed to be considered this one is about a bunch of grid and this one is about your signal so now what happened at a negative half cycle and a positive half cycle what happened at a negative half cycle the electron will move lower there electron will move slower then it will reach at this particular point this at a forward point so this one is about a slower this one is about a faster and this one is about a same one electron will move with a same velocity but at a point so they will reach together and that is called as a what we can say that a punching point or we can say that a bunching center at that point bunching will be takes place and that distance where that bunching will be takes place and that distance from this bunching grid is to be considered as the distance l or a delta l this one 
So that is about a bunchy point. That is about a distance from this to this. Okay, that is called as a delta L. So now this one is about a grid voltage or gap voltage, and that gap voltage is depending upon that a signal voltage sign of V1 sign of omega t. Now this one is about a gap voltage. And that at a particular distance, that bunches formation will be takes place. And here we say that those electrons that pass the buncher cavity during the positive half cycle. Okay. During the positive half cycle, that positive half cycle of what? A microwave signal. That electrons will travel faster. Those electrons moving, those electrons pass during the positive half cycle. Okay, that motion of the electron, okay, that moving electron in this particular positive half cycle, they will move fast. And that's those electrons that pass the buncher cavity during the negative half cycle. They will reduce their velocity. Okay? They will travel the velocity lower than the electron, whatever the earlier velocity is. Okay, so that's why we can say that at a gap voltage 0, we can say that Ps. That is about it. When this one occur, when we have the gap with the body is zero. Okay, at that particular point. And then that particular distance, at a particular distance, from this buncher cavity, the beam, beam electrons will form the bunches there. And that distance is called as the A delta. Yeah. This one is about A delta. So here we need to find out what will be the time required for the acceleration and a deceleration of the electron or we can say that at what particular distance that electrons will travel from to form the particular uh, bunches there. So now that everything is occur in the particular transit gap between these two cavity, buncher cavity and a, a catcher cavity and that region is called as a drift region. And that drift region here, in that particular drift region, so we need to find out the transit time for an electron to travel a distance of a L. So what is the distance? What will be the length? So that in that case, and that is given by the T is equal to what? Here the transit time required to travel from the T1 to T2. Okay. So that is about T2 minus T1, that is about time. And then that is about a distance L. It is depending upon that how much is the exit velocity, that is about Q of T1. And it is equal to, it is equal to T0, 1 minus, what will be the coupling coefficient? V1 input signal amplitude, choice of V0, that is velocity, that is D this will be voltage and then a sign of omega t1 minus a theta g by 2 okay minus theta g by 2 here we can consider that the timing from the t2 minus t1 so t2 is the distance t2 is the time is what which time so means at a particular point the bunches formation will take place. Okay, so we can say that that is about a delta time. So we have the cavity, then another cavity, this one is about another cavity. Now, this from this cavity to this distance. Okay, so now this one is about a distance. So in the case of timing we say that this one is a t0 this one is about t1 then it will re reach to the catcher cavity then that will be the time that is t2 and that it will reach a re moving from this particular cavity that is called as a t3 distance and here the, from this particular length we say that the distance from this to this and that will be the l here that will be the l here. so from this to this okay we supposed to be considered this distance is nothing but in this gap that is about L. And from this to this, this to this is nothing but a gap distance that is about a D here. Here, the total distance, if you consider the electron travel from this 
to this year that will be a l plus t and here you can say that l plus twice t and this one is about a l okay in terms of a distance scale so means distance between the puncture cavity and a catcher cavity that is called as a l and this one is the gap that is a small d again here is the gap this small d so here from this to this that is about l plus d so from this to this that is about a l plus twice d so now we consider here that is about a, a transit time for the electron travel okay to a, at a distance l here and that is nothing but a t here this one is nothing but a t d here and that distance if you consider that in terms of a uh, we can say that how much is the time taken if we write that transit time in terms of a radius we can say that omega t here is equal to omega t 2 minus omega t 1 and that is equal to theta 0 minus x sin of omega t 1 minus theta t by 2 and that x is nothing but a, a fundamental component okay x is nothing but the fundamental component of the bunching parameter x is nothing but a fundamental component of a bunching parameter here a theta 0 is equal to what omega l by the v0 that is a l is nothing but a spacing and a v0 is nothing but a velocity okay omega l to v0 is equal to what a twice by n and that is nothing but what how many number of a electron transit cycle required in that drift space drift space means what from the buncher cavity to the a catcher cavity and that x is nothing but a bunching parameter of the klistron and that will be equal to v i v sorry v1 by twice one. v0 into a theta zero and this one is called as a bunching parameter of the crystal so that is about a x how much is the okay that x value and that x value is depending upon that how much is the current is up there and how what will be the uh, spatial function there so from this we can calculate that x so generally fundamental component of x is equal to 1.841 x is equal to 1.414 that is nothing but the fundamental component and its amplitude x is equal to 1.841 so how it comes okay so now we talk about that beam is propagating here then what will be the beam current okay so what will be the beam current So beam current I2 is equal to it is depending upon that I0 plus summation of n is equal to 1 to infinity here and that twice of whatever the current here then j n of n x here that is bunching parameter and then cos of n omega t2 minus t minus omega t2 minus t minus t okay this this okay this one is about we have a t2 minus t1 t0 and this one is about n omega and this j n is nothing but the basal function and that j n is nothing but the nth order basal function and if you consider that the fundamental component of the beam current at the catcher cavity so it has a magnitude of what i f is equal to what a twice of i zero and that fundamental component that is the body first component okay that is about a j one of x n will be a one so in that case for this fundamental component j one of x so 
the tax will be what? A 1.81. That is the fundamental component and its amplitude. Okay. That is maximum amplitude at this particular point. Okay. At J1 of X is equal to X is equal to 1.841. And then we need to find out what will be the optimum length, L optimum, means distance between that a ca buncher cavity to the catcher cavity. That is called as a L optimum. So L optimum at the particular fundamental component, okay, optimum distance at which the maximum fundamental component of a current obtained that is depending upon 3.682 into V0 capital V0 by omega theta i and V1. So this one is about a optimum distance. And then that maximum bunching occur in between the gap of the buncher cavity and a catcher cavity. That is generally we say that it is maximum bunching occurs, it will be midway between the catcher grid. So in that case, the phase of that particular catcher gap, okay, that is to be maintained so that we will get that a maximum output voltage. So that what we can say that at when that bunches will be moving from this catcher cavity there and they will provide the kinetic energy to the catcher cavity or catcher cavity it has a field. So they will provide the kinetic energy to the catcher cavity. So then, then we will get that ampli amplification of the signal there. Then what happened that then once that electron gives that kinetic energy to the catcher cavity, then that electron reduces their velocity and then they will reach to the catcher. So that's why here that output is depending upon that how much will be the voltage or how much will be the phase that is called as retarded phase. So in which your kinetic energy will give up to the catcher cavity. So that we need to know about what will be the power output of this two cavity crystal. Then the induced current I2 induced there and that is about a current induced in a catcher cavity there so that is depending upon the speed star 0 what will be the I2 here or we can say that in beta 0 sorry Price of I zero, then J one of X into sorry, right here, cos of omega T two minus so here T two minus so minus T zero. That beta zero is nothing but that the beam coupling coefficient of the catcher gap and here if supposed to be considered that the puncture cavity and catcher cavity if both are identical then beta 0 is equal to beta i beta i is about puncture cavity and beta 0 is for the a catcher cavity if both are same then we can write i2 current inducer here it is equal to beta 0 i2 is equal to beta 0 twice of i0 j1 of x and then we can find out the output power output power is depending upon that what will be the catcher cavity punching parameter what will be the current i2 here divided by 2 into rsa or beta 0 into i2 v2 by so how this generally we say that for a given particular circuit that is the body beta 0 i2 here and here this one is the body rsa and then along with that we have some rb okay that rsa is nothing but what that is about effective shunt resistance there and rb is nothing but what that is about a beam loading resistance. 
Okay. And here, we are supposed to be consider that a RL. And that RL is nothing but that a, a load rest. So if you consider the equivalent of this one, then it will be nothing but what? The RS. Okay, that is nothing but a, a RS. So that is about uh, we can say that output file, output power output is nothing but depending upon that a equivalent current resistance of the catcher circuit that include the load that include the V2. This one is nothing but we will get that V2 voltage. So this one is about a V2 here. And again, it is depending upon that a fundamental component of the this one B0, fundamental component of the a catcher cavity. So that is about your the output power. Then last one, that is about the efficiency, efficiency of this klistron. So efficiency is equal to P out by P in is equal to beta 0 I2 2 divided by twice of I0 B0 and that is nothing but the efficiency. If you consider that this particular efficiency equation, so here we need to consider that what will be the power losses and that power losses based on that what will be the beam loading and the cavity that is to be considered in the case of the efficiency. Again, we should know that what will be the coupling coefficient and that coupling generally we say that a beta 0 is equal to 1 and then we will get that the maximum current I2 from that we will get that I2 max and then if you consider this one case then in that case the maximum electron efficiency here up for this particular klistron that will be okay a 58 percent. So that is about your two cavity klistron. In a two cavity klistron, we are supposed to be know that what will be the bunching process, how that bunching of the electron will be takes place. Bunching of the electron is takes place based on the how much is the RF voltage because the electrons will interact with the RF voltage. Okay. And then based on that positive half cycle and negative half cycle, electrons are accelerated and decelerated respectively. And then then attic that electron will move forward towards the catcher cavity and then electron will give up the kinetic energy to the catcher cavity and then amplification of the signal will be takes place. And that's all about your a two cavity clip. So thank you all of you. Thank you all.